Good morning, church. <laughs> hey, it's an honor to be able to share with you this morning. I pray that God is glorified through the words placed on my heart and through my brothers and sisters leading up to this point. All glory be his. When I say leading up to this point, I got asked to uh, come and talk to you about pastoral care about a week or so ago, and I thought, yeah, let's do this, God. Put me out of my comfort zone. Um, and so I set to work, and I had this idea about what I was going to write, and I just keep feeling, you know, pause. And so I asked Jasmine, I said to her one night, she said, are you all right, Mama? And I said, you know, Jazz, I'm, I'm looking at what I'm writing, and I'm just not sure. And I said, can you pray for me? And so she's praying away, and then she prays this thing, okay, God, even if what you have for mum is not what she's already written. And that totally <laughs> threw me off because I was like, okay, Lord, I'd set about writing this message. So I was a little bit unsettled at this time. So I went to a youth, uh, youth group. I'm a bit old for youth group now. <laughs> we'll call it older youth group. It's our home group. And uh, they um, lovingly agreed to pray for me. And again, we had um, words coming through that... Um, you know, that the message would be unique. Um, I guess some would say that's a bit like me. I'm a bit strange sometimes, so unique fits well with me. But then there was, a, um, there was a picture of an open filing cabinet, and it was empty. And I really felt at that time God was saying, hey, Amber, I don't want you to rely on your stuff. It's time to rely on me. <coughs> so this is what he's laid on my heart. I hope you are really blessed by it. So I want to start by saying the best pastoral care you'll ever encounter is right here. It's the Bible. All of life's answers are in here. You know, the dance, it talked about, you have called me deeper, higher. You know, that's what this is all about. He's calling you into a deeper and higher relationship with him. And that's where this exists. You know, it talks about I could hold on and never been changed from the inside. Again, this is what changes us from the inside. You lead me. This is where we're led. You know, Jesus is the way, he's the truth and the life. These words aren't just words. They're our hope in the sometimes hopeless and ruthless world. It's been said to have been the greatest piece of pastoral poetry of all times. I'm talking about Psalm 23, and that's where I want to pick up from today. You know, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen? Amen. You know, when I read that, I see them as fighting words. You know, that's the Lord's declaration to us when we live in relationship with him. So what does this all mean in respect of pastoral care? What is David the psalmist actually saying here? Is he saying it's the pastor's job? Did you know the words pastoral care don't even appear in the Bible? Those two words together? So why not? If it's godly, then why aren't they in there? If it's not a role in the church, why do we reference the why, you know, why, we, why do we put it that way? So I want to unpackage that. When we hear pastoral, 
for me, initially, I heard the word pastor. So it's the pastor's job, it's pastoral. Right? <laughs> the literal meaning of the AL on the end of pastoral is to be like. It's not to be, so it's to be like the pastor. It's to be, it's not to be the pastor. So it's not literally, pastoral is not pastor. It's pastoral, it's like pastor. It's like biblical. We don't, we're not the Bible, but there's characteristics of us, you know, when we're acting out biblically or biblical. It's a way of relating to something. So I wanted to explore that more and see where is this pastoral care written about in the Bible? If we know it's not literally the pastor's job, but that it's like what the pastor does, it's like his calling, then what is this? Pastoral, when we look at the literal meaning in the English dictionary, it actually means in brief, of or relating to. Here's the key. Or associated with shepherds or flocks or herds. In Psalm 23, the Lord is our example. He is our ultimate shepherd. He is our ultimate example of pastoral care. Pastoral care is that of the role of a shepherd. You know, the word shepherd appears over 200 times in the Bible. I think he's trying to tell us something there. You know, the word pastor, how many times do you think that appears in the Bible? Throw some numbers at me. Keep going. Keep going. Would it shock you to hear once? Shocked me. And that's not to undermine it, okay? That's not to undermine it. It's just trying to bring context here around the role of pastoral care. So essentially, we look at, or we relate back to the psalm, David a God through David, inspired a vision of what we should be like. You know, this is talking about what a shepherd should be like. This is giving you the model of what a shepherd should be like. So we're all shepherds, brothers and sisters. We're all called to model after Jesus. And if Jesus is our ultimate shepherd, then we are to follow after that. We are to be like Jesus. You know, our goal is to be as close to Jesus as possible in all of our actions. He has a good guide. You know, pastoral care is the fruit of that. You know, these actions bring life. We're all called to bring God's word to this broken world. And we're all qualified as children of God to do this hear that because it took me a long time to understand that I was a qualified child of God because for me when I was coming up through the church everything rested on the pastor's shoulders on the elders shoulders on the leaders shoulders you know that's not God has definitely appointed them for those positions but as far as shepherding and what God's talking about in this psalm So therefore, in haste, when we find ourselves with somebody in need, you know, don't go looking from your left to your right or your back to your front. You're anointed to live out this calling, church. You're anointed to live out that. If anything, you have this wonderful psalm you can share. You can pray and you can simply listen. Our model in Psalm 23, Jesus is the shepherd and we are the flock. Amen. When we are like Jesus, we become that shepherd and the world is our flock. He calls us to that. And when we use Jesus as our model, we don't return fruitless. Remember, Jesus went out to save the world. You know, he didn't. But that didn't stop him, did it? Every encounter for Jesus was a shepherding opportunity. It was, you know, it was an opportunity to walk with somebody like this. The drama, hilarious. 
And my next thing, you know, I said, we're not, we, we do not need to be of high import, uh, appointment or intelligence to be a shepherd, guys. You know, to deliver pastoral care. You know, if we are equally, we're still called to be shepherds, you know, high or low position in this world, you know, intelligence or, you know, whatever it is. There's no disqualification here. A shepherd is somebody who's willing to walk that out. If we take our families, you know, they're our most treasured possessions that God has given us. In the respect of a family, you're the family shepherd, appointed, anointed and appointed by God to look after that flock. You've been blessed with. If we use the word of God and the example of Jesus in doing this, your family will know that model of God. You know, they'll know the model of Jesus. Coming back, you know, not all are saved. Everyone has a choice, you know, but they need... Church, we need our families to know that model so that when they go through those dark times, they have something to turn back to. In the following passage, I see Jesus shepherding the shepherds. That's my take on it anyway. I'm reading from Matthew 7, 1 to 12. He says, Do not judge or you will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. He's saying, Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, Let me take that speck out of your eye when all the time there's a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will clearly see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asked for bread, would give him a stone? I don't think that there's anybody here that would do that, eh? Or if he asked for a fish, we'll give him a snake. If you then, through, if you then, Though you are evil, know how to give good gifts from your children, to your children, sorry. How much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you, for this sums up the law of the prophets. You know, I relate that back to there, eh? And it's just got so much life in Psalm 23. When I, it was, my goodness, you know, there's, there's so m- I could have come up here and talked about, you know, this is what pastoral care looks like from my own eyes, from your eyes. You know, the expectations, that drama was hilarious. But ultimately, this is what pastoral care looks like. Wise counsel. So here Jesus instructs us that in our service as shepherds, we have a responsibility, church. I can only, I can only see one reason for not taking up this service since we simply don't want to practice what we preach. Harsh, but a true reality for some of us. God gave each of us a free will. Right from the beginning, he set out that our eternity was in our own hands. Ultimately, shepherding is like that too. We will come across those that seek our counsel or even reject it. Don't take it personally. It started right at the beginning of time. And again, I say, did that stop Jesus? No, it didn't. Be encouraged, church, shepherds of God. As David the psalmist wrote in his psalm here, God will always be with those of us that seek to follow after him and the lives of the lost. 
Let us take these words, breathe them in, live them out for the rest of our days. Church, pastoral care is not a position. It is a calling. I pray your hearts are captivated by this path and that your flocks at harvest are plentiful. Go well, brothers and sisters. My daughter would hate me for saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway because this is the quirky part. As High School Musical put it, We're all in this together. (laughs) Amen? Amen. So guys, I'm going to call Johanna up again. She's got a a, a few more things to wrap up. And um, yeah, and I'll come back to you in a minute. (laughs) Cool. Thanks, guys. So this morning I've just been asked to wrap up what Amber's saying. So from what I was hearing where I was sitting in my seat is that that psalm, it really struck me, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, that God is ultimately our pastoral care person that we go to. He's the one who's our source. He's the one who's our strength. He's the one that can ultimately comfort us. He can bring us hope. He can bring us joy. He can bring us love in a way that nobody on this earth ever could. But the cool thing about God is that when we go to him and we receive from him in that manner, he fills us with his Holy Spirit, which then empowers every single one of us to be able to go out into the world, to be able to go to church, to be able to go to our workplaces, to our schools, and to be able to give out that pastoral care that God gives, that we would be able to say of ourselves that we are shepherds of others around us. And as I read through that psalm that Amber had up there, I thought about my friends, and I thought about how I could say, Johanna is my shepherd. You know, that's what I'd love others to be able to say about me personally, that I'd be like Christ in that way, that I'd offer pastoral care in that way to other people around me. And I heard Amber saying this morning that we need to be willing to get alongside each other, to not back off, not to look at somebody else and say, hey, that person, Therese is really good at pastoral care, she should pick up on that person. Or I see Eugene over there, he's good at dramas, maybe he should go and talk to the person who just walked in that was new because he was on stage. But not to do that, but actually to be responsible ourselves to say, God, I'm willing to let you use me, Lord, that you would be my strength, that you would give me the words to say, that you would give me the courage, God, to be who you're calling me to be. Our responsibility, church, is to be people that are pastoral care people, that are willing to reach out and to love in a very powerful and a very deep way. So from this message this morning, let us come out of this place and let us never be the same again. Amen. Amen. Let us care for each other in a way that we never have before. Let us love deeper and wider. Let us take a hold of this because, church, if we do this, the thing is we can turn this whole world upside down because it is the love of Jesus that turned his disciples around. It is the love of the disciples that changed this world. And it can be the love of Hosanna Porirua that changes Porirua City, that changes New Zealand, that changes our universe. Amen. Woohoo! I'm glad she got that much out of it. It was awesome. So hey guys, um, Rich's blessings, and I mean that in the most sincerest way. Um, I hope that you have an awesome afternoon. We've got another service here tonight at five o'clock, and we'd really love to see you all here. If there's anybody out here today that has, um, you know, needs for pastoral care, um, we'd love to pray with you. So if you feel that you feel free to come down the front as we wrap up. Um, there's some wonderful shepherds here in Hosanna that would just be more than willing to stay and pray with you. Have an awesome day, guys. Bless you. Thanks.